Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Well, as you may remember, last week we were talking with Chuck Farnham, which our time was like three minutes ago. And right, it seemed like a long Chuck, time ago. Chuck Farnham, if you don't know who he was, when I was in San Francisco doing my San Francisco program, which I think was the most popular program I ever did in my career, uh, I uh, uh, suddenly um, um, had this guy come in to me, uh, come into my life, who was selling human bone jewelry. And one thing led to another, and after a while, you became a regular on the show, going out on the street, doing stunts and things like that. But before I go yeah. any further, there's one other thing we did that I remember, okay, and you, I'm sure you remember. We started a website. Uh, yeah, yeah, we did. And it was, I'd have to say, one of the first websites. Certainly was right up there at the beginning. And you will attest to something which I've been claiming for years. I've been claiming for years I invented the podcast. Because I, I remember when I was out of work, I used to do a show from my house and put it up right. on my website, on my website, uh, and and uh, people could go there. And we had a thing called um, Auto Alex that you could download. It was a program. Right. And then you put that on your computer, and every day it would go to see if I had a new episode, and then it would download it to your computer. Do you remember that? Yep, uh, I was on those things. Yeah, was that not the your... was that not the first podcast? Can you think of anything it's... like that before it? No. Okay. So no. Uh, so I'm right. You will testify if I have to I go will to court. I will testify that, that I invented right the there. podcast. You invented the podcast because what Apple came up with years later, where you go to Apple and. Uh, it will automatically download the latest of something to you. Started yeah. started with us. It, we did. It, it, we did a lot of weird stuff. Well, we didn't do it. Uh, with the the uh, website we came up with was the Surfing Monkey. Right. Yeah. After after a ceramic monkey, I sent them to Mexico. When they did, what it was, there were these. Cer <laughs> they weren't ceramic. They were almost pa plastic. So they're, pairs. Yeah, weird. Pla they're right next to if you're. If you're going to Mexico, and I wouldn't recommend that, you know the little old ladies that breastfeed the babies right next to the border? No, They're right but, next to them. Oh, okay. to buy but anyway, it's, just, it, it's this uh, the this uh, little uh, statue you can buy down in Tijuana or whatever right. of, yeah, yeah. of a monkey on a surfboard. Yeah. And I figured, who came up with that? You know, what, what could you, you know, what? Uh, and so we're sitting around my apartment trying to figure out what we're going to call the website. And I had one of these things. Either you right. got it for me or I, I gave it to you. Yeah. You gave it to me. And I'm looking over there and I said, hey, how about that? The surfing monkey. And and I think uh, Biedney, who was the other guy involved with right. us, Dave Biedney, said, what do you mean surfing monkey? And I said, look, surfing monkey. Yeah, and we, we right figured, there. well, you surf the web. Yeah. And it's a monkey. We, Monkeys are always a so that we the surfing monkey was our website and I think maybe there were maybe there were a thousand other websites in the world. It, if there time. was. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. There were not there were not many places to go. I will not lay I will not stuff. lay claim to the first website, but I will take lay claim to creating the podcast. Yeah. Gee, now I can right. sue. I can sue everybody that does a podcast now because I've got you to back me up on this one. Exactly, I'll show up in court for you. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, um, uh, I'm you remember one of the weird things that was on that thing that everybody told me not to do? What? I created a thing called Stooly, where every day, if you did your daily, uh, you know, poop, mm -hmm. uh, you could take a photo of it, or you could write it and tell us about it, and. Everybody thought 
nobody. This is I, not happening. I don't remember. Nobody, I don't remember that. But no, we just it, we were getting thousands of people a day. See, I need people like Chuck to be my memory. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, we had thousands of people a day from all over the world looking for you know the internet things to do and telling us how they pooped. It was, it was, and I still have that. Well, I, I don't remember that, but I do remember the thing that got me in trouble was I had this guy who used to call me at the station who was in San Quentin, but he wasn't just in San Quentin. <laughs> he was a special part. He was a special, the special part. He was on death row. <laughs> All right. Uh, I think he still is, Alex. I, yeah, I know he still I is. <laughs> I don't think he got out. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I lost track of him years ago, but I'm sure if I wrote him, he would write me back because he's got nowhere to go. Right. Um, well, he's not allowed to go anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, he um, he got the death penalty for, uh, you know, I, I, what, I'll tell you the story Where, here. I, uh, wearing a woman's sweater. No, here's what here's what the problem was. Here's what the problem was. I put this guy on our website writing a column of what it's like to be on death row. And I thought that was a terrific thing. Very yeah. altruistic, I thought. No, not yeah. altruistic, altruistic so much as it was an education for people. Here's yeah. what it's like to live day to day with a sword of Damocles at your throat, all right? Ready to chop it off, ready to execute you, and living that day to day. And he wrote some fascinating stuff. I mean, yeah. you remember it. It was just great stuff. And it was called oh, Dead, I, Dead Man Talking. I went I went up and visited him many times. Well, I went once with uh, Lori <laughs> Thompson, who was our newswoman. And she showed up wearing a sausage casing dress. Nice. Nice. And as she's walking into the prison, everybody's staring at her. And I'm going, why, yeah. why are you doing this? You want these guys are in here forever, right? You know, right? They, they can't afford to have a boner. You know, I mean, yeah. it just it's just not a good idea. And we went to see Dean. That was his name, right? And uh, he uh, uh, very nice to us, but they had him all chained up, you know, at the waist or right. whatever. And uh, because obviously we don't want to get killed. Oh, so you went. You went on a, like a media visit. To oh, yeah, media, and then right? he put us in yeah. a cell with him. Yeah, oh, yeah, okay. no. But they've got him all chained up and everything, like he's going to escape. You know, maybe he yeah. tried to kill us, but then that would I'd get publicity. Anyway, yeah. so um, uh, we go there, and, I mean, I wear, I'm wear i wearing like a pair of jeans. And they said, oh, you, mm. can't, you can't wear a pair of jeans. I no. said, Why? And they said, because if somebody wants to escape, they're probably going to be wearing jeans. So right. here, you've got to wear these special pants we have that you can put over your <laughs> yeah. pants. And it's a pair of white yeah. pants, okay? Yeah. And then suddenly, Lori mentions, have you looked at the crotch? <laughs> and I said, no. There was a lipstick mark on the crotch, like uh, lips. Of course. Right? Anyway. Yeah, I could believe it. That, that, so that, that's how we met Dean. And we got a lot of trouble for running that column, you know. Yeah, they don't like you to talk about... You, they don't like you to humanize Yeah, a guy in, on death row. And I found him fascinating. I mean, I would talk to him on the phone and have endless conversations about a number of things, you know. Yeah. Uh, he was not a stupid man. He had lived in no. Alaska, worked as a cameraman for CNN. Yeah. You know. And and I found him uh, ultimately fascinating, but um, uh, eventually he went and did the column for somebody else because he was offered some money for it. You know? Nice. But it it we, we got a lot of a lot of heat on that deal. And yeah, so he was an interesting guy. I mean, finally one day, my girlfriend at the time uh, said to me, uh, "Hey, what have you ever tried to find out what he did?" And I said, "I don't want to know." Him be, he, I, my relationship to him is not as a cold-blooded murderer. My relationship to him is, you know, I'm, once I said to him, uh, I'm not going to ask you what you're in there for. He says, well, I'm not in here for traffic tickets. That's what he no. said. 
you know. And it wasn't, and it wasn't a single event either. Yeah, well, he said she. <laughs> my girlfriend said, "Let's go. There's a, a little, there's a library over there. Why don't we go over and see if we can yeah. find it in the magazine section?" So we look up the name and his name, and it sure enough points us to a uh, an article in Red Book magazine called "A Kiss," yep. and the article was called "A Kiss from My Killer." And it was about this guy, Dean, who it turns out had killed, was accused of killing five women with his bare, right. with his bare hands. Now that's yeah. craft. That's but craft. He was, he was, <laughs> yeah. he had, and then Dean's, uh, you know, he did have big hands. Yeah. And, and, <laughs> and, and, and uh, he, he, was, he was found guilty of four. And they kept the other one at bay just in case he got out of the other four. Okay. Uh, and, and they, they caught, they, you know how they caught him? He was wearing the, one of them sweater driving her car. I, I, that I did not remember, but I'm yeah. sure. But anyway, he, uh, uh, you know, uh, and I never asked him whether he was guilty or not or ever to explain it. And I told him, don't ever do it in the column. You can say in the first column something like, I'll just tell you that I believe that I'm innocent and then go on with it. You know? right. In other words, we don't want these articles to be about you making a case for yourself. We want right. them to be about what it's like to live in San Quentin. Because there really was no case to be made. There, there was no case to be made. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, oh, but anyway, so, so it, well, here's what happens. Here's what a terrible person I am. So the next time after I go to this library and read this stuff, I get a call, and it's, Call from uh, Dean, blah blah blah, at uh, at uh, 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 San Quentin. Yeah. Will you accept the charges? You know, I go, right? And I'm thinking to myself, and I go, no, and I hang up because I am so frightened by what you know. The next yeah. time he yeah. calls, I take the call, and I said, I have to admit something to you. I was here the last time you called. I said, but I had read an article about you. And I kind of was didn't know what to do, and he said, "That's not uncommon. I'm used to it, you know." And I yeah, said, it's, and, "Yeah, it's." And we got on with our relationship, you know. He, yeah. he would call me every Saturday, and we'd talk for a couple hours, you know. Yeah, that was about a billion dollars, wasn't it? Those yeah. calls when you call people call you from prison. Yeah, it's it's not a free call. No, it's not. You, you're paying like four bucks a minute to talk yeah. to somebody. Yeah, yeah. It, what kind of deal is that? Yeah. I never understood that either. It's <laughs> like, why are we paying to talk to these people? Yeah. They don't have to pay for the call. Yeah, exactly. So, that, you know, we had a lot of fun. Yeah. It was nuts. And I, you know, you, you moved from, you got to see him inside of like a, a cell. They used to have this big waiting get guest room there. Yeah. And you go out there and you oh, could be with oh, oh yeah, I forgot this about you. You were making a you were making it a hobby to get to know <laughs> serial killers. All of them. Tell them who you knew, who you went to San Quentin <laughs> to visit all the time. Listen to this, folks. No. You're not well, gonna believe went, this. Is is really weird. I went to see Dean one time mm -hmm. and Dean had to go to the bathroom. Which you're in a little like it looks like any doctor's office. I mean, yeah. you know, with with really heavy windows. He has to go to the bathroom, which means it's going to be a long time before he comes back because there's all kinds of searching that has to go on because he left my presence and came back. Mm -hmm. So Dean goes, well, "Why don't you talk to your buddy?" And I go, "Who's my buddy, Dean? I came to see you." And he goes, "Don't you know him?" And he points to Richard Ramirez, the <laughs> Night Stalker. The Night Stalker. And I go, well, we have corresponded. One of I the know. most one of the most notorious killers in the history of California. Exactly. And I go, you know, I don't really know him. We only correspond. I have never met him. And he goes, well, it's going to take a while. And so I'm sitting there, and, and I'm like, okay, I, I'm just going to do this. Mm -hmm. So I go over and I go to walk behind him. And I notice his wife, who is there visiting every day is talking to another inmate. So I go to walk up behind the, you know, Richard Ramirez, and 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 he turns around, and as I open my mouth, he goes, Chuck, is that you? And at, at that moment, I, 
I knew I, knew I w- was in trouble. It just uh, uh, didn't make sense. Uh, and I, it was Ramirez. It was um, Son of Sam. It was uh, Richard Allen Davis. I testified at Charles Ng's trial. Oh, wait a minute. Wait. You, number one, uh, well, of course, uh, uh, the uh, New York situ- situation. Right. You never met him. Yeah. No, no, but he, he used to write and call all the time. Who? Um, Son of Sam. Son of they Sam? Were... You you corresponded with Son of Sam. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I was trying to expand my, you know, letter writing capabilities. Yeah, is he still, he's dead, isn't he? No, no, he, he's still he's around. Uh, R- Richard's gone. Richard Ramirez. He got killed yeah. in prison, didn't he? No, he died of, according to the police, he died of natural causes. I don't believe that for a second because yeah. one time I, I went to visit and I came in to give my thing and I'm sitting there and the cop is looking at me. He's looking at my ID and he, he's staring at me and he goes, somebody wants to see you. And I go, yeah, I'm here to see Dean Carter. He goes, no, no. And the cops really don't like people visiting. It's just too much trouble for them. So he goes, no, no. And I go, no, I'm here to see Carter. And he goes, turn around, Mr. Farnham. And I turn around, and in protective custody is Ramirez, and he's standing on a chair, and he's banging on this window, you know, into the into the visiting area. And he goes, you're here to see Mr. Ramirez. And I went, no, no. He goes, do you know Mr. Ramirez? And I go, well, we've met a couple of times. Does that count as knowing somebody? And the guy just shakes his head and goes, go over there to the window and say hi. Get him to shut up. <laughs> and I went over there, and Ramirez's wife would be muling drugs in. Or somebody would mule drugs in, because Richard was always in the uh, visiting room. Well, he also had a lot of girlfriends, didn't he? I mean, women well, were... Well, hot. yeah, yeah. The wife, there, they, there's this whole subset of human being that are women who are hot for guys on death row. Oh, massive. The parking lot is full of people. And, and what did you, uh, Richard Ramirez, the Night Stalker, I mean, did you have a nickname for him, like Stalky or something no, like that? Like, <laughs> you know? like, oh, hi, Richard, how are you? And, yeah. and he, you know, occasionally he'd have teeth busted out. And I go, you know, why, how, where's your, where are your teeth, Richard? And he goes, well, they beat me up because I said I'm not going to mule drugs in for him anymore. And I said, you're doing the right thing, Richard. Yeah. You know, here I am telling the Night Stalker he's doing the right thing. Yeah. Oh, and he used to send, I got all kinds of artwork. He used to send, you know, pictures of himself. You, you, ought, to write, you ought to put a book together about this. You know, I keep hearing that. You know, there was a book. I, there was a book you and I almost had published. Yeah. Of, uh, of death notices. Right. Which was, I right. think, still a great idea for a book because when no, you it is. when you look at these uh, these are the the death certificates of famous people, they're fascinating to read. And we had like Kurt Cobain's uh, death I, certificate. I death certificates for everybody. I yeah, think for everybody. And we I went to somebody. We put a whole bunch of them together. I went to somebody in New York at uh, St. Martin's Press, and they looked at it and they said, "We." I was in Europe at the time. They said, "We want it." Yeah. By the time I got back, they didn't want it anymore. Of course. But, I mean, what a what a terrific, you know, what a terrific Yeah, book I've got of stacks it. of that and, stuff here. You know, I mean, I could never throw anything away. Yeah. So it's all here. Yeah. Well, maybe we maybe we should try and get it going again. Because work, work something together. What was, what was the title we had for it? Last uh, something. Last, last Man Standing? No, last, 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 last Word or something. I can't remember the yeah. name of it now. But uh, it, Final it, Notice? Mm-hmm. Final notice would be final notice. That was it. Final notice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I mean, that's that's really you know that's pretty pretty terrific stuff. That uh, yeah, we had we had a great time. I don't think you could do it again today, like we were. Oh, we couldn't do we couldn't do what we were doing. I couldn't do that show in the way that I did that show. It's not like there was anything that was terrible. But today, you know, everybody's so sensitive about everything. That we, yeah. we would have had a real problem, you know, with some of yeah. the stuff we did. Well, because we didn't think about it. We just went, we went, hey, this sounds funny to us. Let's go do it. Yeah. I mean, they, they weren't all home runs, but there were a lot of them. Yeah. 
you know. But, you know, I remember uh, one of my little stunts was I had a, uh, a girl write me who said, uh, who was a fan of the show. We had met her. She dropped by with her mother or something. She said, I was going to go to my senior prom and now I can't because my boyfriend left town. You know, they moved somewhere else. And I went, oh, well, I know what I'll do. This is great for publicity. I'll take you to your senior prom. Oh, Jesus. And I took her to her senior prom. And that nice. relationship lasted 12 years. Wow. Yeah. You remember her. Yeah. Mm, maybe. Yeah. 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 She, but uh, she, she, was, she was 18 by the time we, you know, started dating. But That's good. But I took her out on her senior prom, and I do remember the one moment that I had her at, out at the senior prom, and there were some kids there. I went to the bathroom, some kids there, and they went, gee, he doesn't look like he goes to school with us. Yeah. And I looked you, over at him, and like I said, no, sh no shit, Sherlock. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know. It's like, what were you, the hall monitor? Uh, uh, yeah, something like that. But no, it was her date for the night. We took her out to a nice dinner, you know, and we had a limousine, and we took her to the uh, the prom, and it was a beautiful night for her. So I, I, nice. I always used to be able to tell people, my girlfriend, the first time I met her, I went out to a senior her senior prom. Yeah, and that's good. That's, you know. that's how far I'll go to get laid. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, and I don't know if you want to tell the story, but... That that couple that came over to your house one time. What's this? You remember that? The, I don't know how you ended up meeting them, but they came back to your house, and the whole thing was they just wanted uh, you to watch them. If, no, no, they wanted to watch. He, he to be wanted part of to that? watch. He wanted to watch. He and his wife have. No, he wanted to watch his wife have sex with me. Nice. <laughs> I love that one. That was just like, and it was great sex too. And he just sat by oh. the side of the bed. It was a cuckold situation, right? You know, yeah. And yeah. I invented the cuckold, folks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but it, it, they, they, yeah, they. It, it's a long story, and I don't want to get into it here. No, no. But I, that, I think of that one every once in a while. You want to, you know, you want to have a good. And we did it a couple it. of times. A couple of times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had some weird ones down in Vegas too that were just yeah. similar. Similar yet weird. That's yeah. the sad part of getting the two of us together. Yeah, yeah. You're frozen all of a sudden. Should, no, there you go. To, to, to get us both in trouble, you know? Yeah, yeah. Given, given the amount of time, we can... Uh, we, had, we had amazing times. We had... Uh, we had, Well, it was... It was fun times. You yeah. Know? It was weird times. Yeah, it was it was. Um, all I mean, we good we were very privileged because I had a very successful show, I mean, right? Uh, you know, and that uh, the success of that show afforded us certain opportunities, right? That you wouldn't normally be afforded. Which, if I took advantage of them today, somebody, some nutcase along the way would have said, "Oh, he raped me," or something like that, and then <laughs> all of a sudden, I'm not working anymore. And it's all because yeah. somebody accused no, you're me. Like, what, what do you mean? Oh no, you got naked on the street. You know that's indecent exposure. Now you're convicted and for well, 25 you, you, years. You're, you're going to love this one. I had a, I had a, somebody come to me, a man, uh, adult male, and he comes to me and he said, uh, "I've got to talk to you." So why? He said, "My daughter's pregnant. She says it's you." Okay. And I said, "What's her name?" And he told me her name. I said, "I never met anybody that name." It turned out she was completely lying. You know, right. when, when she, her father said, who got you pregnant? The first thing she could think of is the morning guy she listens to on the radio. What, yeah, what, you see a bus come by about yeah. that time? And ago? I, had hey, to that I had to convince this guy that it wasn't me, and finally she admitted it wasn't me. But if that Man. happened today, can you imagine the trouble I'd be in? Just that no, lie, just a lie. Thousands of dollars in legal fees and well, Mr. drug Mr. tests. Mr. Mr. Reamer would have been able to handle it, I'm sure. Fred, yeah. yeah. God bless Fred. Yeah, so what What are you doing for the rest of the day in, uh, where is it? Where is uh, it? In lovely Alabama. Um, you know, it's Good Friday, so. Well, when we're uh, recording no. this. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it is good. It's Good Friday today, maybe. Well, probably we would um, have dressed you up as a giant bunny and put you on a cross or something. Right, yeah, right. Yeah. I'm, I'll probably put those photos up because I have those those pictures as well. Yeah. From the time we we uh, 
Yeah. Had me with the cross. So, Tim, yeah, you that's know, it. How uh, about you? Uh, talking to you now after all this time, uh, I'm, I'm sorry I haven't talked to you, but now we've got endless amounts of things to talk about. Exactly. And we probably should do another one of these because yeah. we still got much more stuff to cover. And I think we will. Yeah. But I, right now, we got to call it a close. Ladies and gentlemen, Chuck Farnham. Thank you, Chuck. Bye. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Yes, after all these years, getting back together with Chuck Farnham has uh, kind of been a pleasure. And uh, he will be here uh, again uh, next week. Let me just get my... I, 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 every now and then, I, about um, Monday, Wednesdays, I always have to, like, reset everything. Okay? There we go. There we go. Okay. How's that? Is that nice? Okay. That's good. Anyway... Um, uh, it, it, it's it kind of nice to talk to him, and it brings back a lot of memories. And he also backs up my theory that I created the uh, podcast because he was there when I did it. He was part of it. So anyway, but nobody will ever give me credit for that. They're never going to hold. You know, once I, I did mention that uh, to online, to a, a website, uh, that was talking about how, uh, I don't know, somebody was the first podcaster. And I said, no, I was the first podcaster. And I told them when and how, and they said, no, you couldn't be. He was the first podcaster. I went, okay, if you don't want the truth here, you know, but it was what I was doing back then. Screw you, you know. Anyway, I'll never get credit for that. You you watch. Uh <laughs> and it's not like I'm expecting any money out of it, okay? Although all those people who are doing podcasts should have to pay me a royalty, but, they, but they're not going to, so what the hell. Let's uh, start bringing in some of these people to the uh, podcast. Bring them in on the Zoom podcast. This isn't a podcast. I don't know what this is. I have no idea. Anyway, hello, Charlie. How are you, Charlie? I'm doing great. There he is, ladies and gentlemen. What does it say today on your T-shirt? Science. Oh, the good thing about science is that it's true, whether you believe it or not. Or whether or not you <laughs> yeah. believe it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Science is true. That's right. Not, not every bit is exactly correct because somebody has to interpret it and figure it out and so on and so forth. Um, there used to be a saying... It came from The Old Man and the Mountain, I think, was the book. And it was, nothing is true, all is forgiven. Okay? And I thought about that for a while, and I went, well, that's not true, because how can all be forgiven? I don't know. I came up with a reason why that wasn't true. But anyway. Hello, Jeff. How are you? Good. How are you doing? And hello to Brian. How are you? I am fine. How be you? What's going on in your life? Tell me something exciting that's happening in your life. Uh, 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 well, something very exciting has happened in my life, but I can't talk about it. So, oh, okay. yeah, I can't talk about it. Uh, one day I will. Ever? Oh, okay. Oh no, I, eventually I will. Good. Uh, but uh, I, I really, it's something. It's not that I mind talking about, it, but Marjorie says don't talk about it yet. Uh -oh. You know, so when uh -oh. it, when it comes to pass, I will get get a boner. Huh? Yeah, I think that was it. I got a boner. Just, don't talk about it. <laughs> don't, don't talk about it. I don't want to. Hey, shoot. what a, hmm? what about Lori Thompson? I know you, you were trying to get a hold of her or something, and have you guys communicated back and forth? Yeah, we have, but she keeps saying to me, "Well, she first she said I'm going to I don't know South America." Okay, uh -huh. I'll let you know when I get back. So I, I about the time she was getting back, I wrote her a text and said well now that you're back you want to do one with me and she says well i would but, but i've got uh i've got uh oh, get a hold of me next week so then i got a hold of her the next week and she says well i've come down with something or another i can't remember what and i i can't do it right now because i'm not well so i said okay well i'll get back to you i just gave up <laughs> you know you know, mm -hmm. I mean, I'd like to do her. Of course, I'd love to have her on here. Um, yeah, I, that's tough. I, I've I've had 
some friends like that too. Same thing. You try a few times, and then after that, it's like you know I want to talk to you. You know I don't want to hang out. If you want to hang out, you call me. So yeah, after yeah. a while, you give up. You know? Yeah, yeah. Um, the It'll sad, happen. Well, the sad part about it is, I mean, the, the situation with Chuck, which was kind of made it all interesting, was that we didn't talk to each other for almost twenty five years because of a falling out we had mm -hmm. and it's just nice that we are talking again you know it's it's nice after all this time because whatever i enjoyed about chuck i still enjoy so that's good and you get to enjoy him as well yeah you know yeah it brings back some memories when you guys are talking about some things i sort of remember some of those crazy things yeah your time's in jail stuff like that who's in jail no, you don't say stuff like that. Because then some people are going to go, Alex was in jail? and Not that's all Alex, that, Brian. That, Brian said it brings back memories. I said your time in jail? It was he, prison. He, prison. Prison, by the way, not jail. Okay. Prison. I stand corrected. Yeah. Yeah. What time did the show start? Did I miss a lot of it? Yeah, we talked about you the entire time. Yeah, we're about ready to sign off now. You're calling yeah, too hey, late. Hey, yeah. Wait, goodbye. Yeah, we'll let you sign off before the rest of us. Goodbye. Okay. We'll goodbye. see you later. <laughs> well, what time does the show start? Don't you know what time the show starts? What kind of what? Right now, a few minutes ago. I I I, I stopped taking uh, the heavier version of my pill now, mm. and my and my eyesight's getting better. Really? Yeah, hmm. it's like blurry a lot, you know. But it, it came back, so you know. Uh, let me just see here. I just want to do something here, just so I can make sure this is okay. All right, there we go. Uh, but anyway, so I and as so my eyesight is better, and um, I'm not as loopy. I'm still a little tired and everything, but you know, it's. Uh, I may I may try and stop that drug altogether if I can, because. Yeah. What, what good is it doing me? I bump into walls. You know. Hello, Kevin. How are you? All right. How you doing, Alex? Yeah. How you doing? How you doing? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm laughing because Albert, Albert, when he was on the Monday show, I listened to, I was listening to you guys when I was driving home from Lode. Mm -hmm. But he, he made you tell, ask everybody how they were doing. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, that was the whole hour. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah, yeah, That's because funny. Albert said, uh, "Gee, how's everybody doing?" I said, "Well, let me ask them one by one." One by one, <laughs> and and I and then they would say something, and then I would talk with them for a while about it, and then I get to the wow. next person, elaborate. By the time I was finished, the hour was up. Yeah, <laughs> and we found out actually how everybody was. Yeah, we found out some interesting things about people too. Yeah, yeah. I forget what they are now, but they they were interesting I, I, at the time. <laughs> well, mainly because you're like me, you really don't care about what other people do. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. What are you doing? Huh? Huh? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> right. right. You didn't hear what I said, right? You know, what's his name? Was... <laughs> yeah, I don't know. And then, <laughs> oh, man, that one guy. Um... Oh, man. What? Okay, I'm drawing a blank. Uh, Michael Sheen. Oh, no, Sheen. Charlie Sheen. Charlie Sheen. Oh, he was Sheen. talking to somebody. He was being interviewed by somebody. And he would listen like like intently listen to them while they were talking mm -hmm. and to the point where then there's like this silence in between because people weren't like interrupt not interrupting you by how you sort of continue the conversation right. really very right. tight right right and he he just has this thing about listening but the listening how he listens like so uncomfortable because he just listens every single word coming out and then when he when you stop He's still waiting to make sure you're done. Well, the actually, actually, my technique in interviewing people was I stared at them throughout the entire interview, uh -huh. looked at them directly. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, uh, and the reason for that was is that I felt I could orchestrate them with my eyes. Uh -huh. In other words, let's say they said something. Too many interviewers would then jump in with something they wanted to ask next or something like that. But they, the, if they had just paused mm -hmm. for like a couple of seconds, the person would have elaborated on what they were saying. Yes. So what I would do is I would look at somebody intently while I was interviewing them, and then if they paused, I would just kind of go, mm -hmm. and then they'd and they feel compelled. They feel compelled to keep talking. Mm 
yeah, they keep going. And uh, and that's how I uh, that that was my secret of interviewing. You know who does that? Who bugs me the most is mm. Bill Maher. Bill Maher asks a question, and then when their first statement of that answer is done, mm -hmm. he's looking at his cards already for the next question. And I'm like, well, shut up. Let him elaborate on what he was just talking about, because now you're not just getting the answer, but you're hearing the story behind the answer. You know. Well, I had a woman who I worked with at Sirius who gave me a bad time because she says, you never prep. <laughs> and I go, why should I prep? I'm curious. Mm -hmm. You know? I never prepped for interviews. A few times I missed things because I didn't, but that was rare. Um, you know, I mean, I remember I was interviewing Robert Wise, the director, and uh, he had just dug, finished doing what Star Trek, the movie or the motion picture. And so I was asking him all about that. And when he left, I about, Oh, an hour later, I went, son of a bitch, I forgot to ask him. He edited Citizen Kane, mm. <laughs> you know. So occasionally, without having preparation, I have missed out on some stuff, but very rarely. Because mm. what I do is I go into interview um, curious, okay? And that's all you have to have is curiosity to do a good interview, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, good, I'm glad it's Tony. Um, I never thought I would say that, but I'm glad it's Tony. Oh my God! <laughs> Hi, neighbor. <Nabla. laughs> because no other Tonys can now call. Okay, so anyway, oh. so uh, um, uh, but that that was that was my technique of uh, of interviewing. Uh, but what was I going to say? Um, there was something I was going for there, and then I forgot what it was. So. Oh, about the editing of uh, oh, but. Talking to people about certain things. Oh, yeah, yeah, that I would stare at them and so on. Well, now, the opposite is true of Marjorie. She hates me because she Morning. says to me, you never look at me when I'm talking. <laughs> and the really? reason I don't, really? and I tried to explain it to her, is when I am doing phone calls on a show, okay, I'm listening to the phone calls. But I'm looking everywhere in the room. Doesn't matter where I look. So when she'd oh, say listening. something to me, she was like a phone call to me. Uh, and so I wouldn't oh, stare okay. at her while she was talking. And I really should. I mean, it would be nice if that's what she wants. It's a pretty ugly sight, but I'll do it. Just tell her you, know? you don't want her to elaborate. Huh? <laughs> I don't want her to elaborate, exactly. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, so, I mean, it was kind of the opposite with Marjorie. She always complained that I never looked at her when she was talking. And part of that was that when I was talking with people on the phone, which was a large part of my show, I was always looking somewhere else, except if I had an interview in the room and then I was looking at them. Anyway, enough about me. But, uh, yeah, life is... How are life. you, Alex? Uh, huh? <laughs> How are you? Yeah, how you feeling? I heard the Monday show, yeah. I'm fine. I'm fine. Yeah, the Monday show. Yeah, like, yeah. I'm actually quite fine, to tell you the truth. Uh, one of these days you'll find out what I'm referring to. Um, yes, uh, Alan. Over the weekend I was watching some videos of you. You were doing an interview uh, in the San Francisco Marriott in the, I think in the 90s. and With Larry uh, King. Larry, Larry King. King, absolutely. And you were just talking about what you were talking about, that you don't pre-write things down, and he doesn't do that either, didn't do that. Well, we, we compared notes on that, and I remember after that interview, we had lunch. Mm -hmm. And we, we had a lot of things in common about the way in which we dealt with people and interviewed them. But and, you were friends and, already before that, right? No, no. We weren't. Oh, friends. really? No, no, we didn't know each other. We knew of each other. Well, actually. Oh, well, I mean, when, he was, when you were interviewing everybody in in the Marriott there, he came in and talked like you were friends. Yeah, well, I, I did work with him at one point. I worked with him at WMCA here in New That's York. That's right. You said, you got, you said everybody was going to get fired two months later. Everybody in this one picture was fired. No, 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 no. no. It was a picture they took. They said, okay, we're going to take a group photo of all the WMCA talk hosts, right? And I went, okay, fine. Um, and we all get, we're all standing there. And they said, well, you sit here, and hi, Steve, how are you? Steve Fox, ladies and gentlemen, the new voice of GabNet. Oh. I, 
Hi, Steve. This is Gabnet. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Anyway, I, 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 where was I? I was talking about the King. Oh, Larry King. Larry King. Oh, Larry King. Um, uh, that I, uh, so, so the, oh, they were taking a picture of the group of us. And so they say, well, you sit, stand here, and you stand here, and you stand here. And they, in the picture, it's a great picture. I mean, it was uh, Larry King and Sally Jesse Raphael and a couple other people I can't remember right now. And it was I and somebody else, and we were on the edges of the group. That's where they placed us. And I said to him afterwards, I said, you know why we're on the edge? And he said, no. And I said, because <laughs> we're going to be gone within two weeks, and they can crop the picture without us in it. And sure enough, two weeks yeah. later, we were both fired. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I still have that picture somewhere. I don't know where, but, you know. But Larry King yeah, was so in there. I remember that. Hmm? I remember that. Do you remember it? You got, yeah, you both got fired within very close time period. But this was wow. in New York. I oh, remember. maybe I don't remember that. that yeah, that, yeah this was in New yeah. York. This was in New York. I thought, I thought I heard, maybe I heard you talk about it. That's probably what it was. So, I mean, well, there was a vid, wasn't there a video with you and uh, Larry King in San Francisco? Well, that's, that that's what he, that's yeah. what, uh, that's what I just brought before up. You before came, oh, sorry. Came I, just, I just dropped in. Yeah. Well, and actually, we ran it on this show. I've run it on this show before. Maybe I'll run it again. It's like 45 minutes. Good interview. It is. Yeah. Good. You know, and, um, Considering he's dead, he won't want any residuals. So you know, but uh, eh, you just go lay it on his grave. Give him a couple bucks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but no, I I remember that discussion I had with him after the show. You know, we went and just had a bite to eat, and I, we were talking about just interview technique. And he and I had the same theory about it. You know, you don't prepare for an interview because if you pre you you, ha you should know who the person is. You should have a basic thumbnail of who the person is. But if you don't, and then I said, I hold a conversation. He said, that's exactly what I do. And I said, in that conversation, out of pure curiosity, you're going to ask certain, a lot of different questions because you're curious. And I said, and, and the main reason I don't want to know ahead of time w about what this guy is going to talk about or whatever is I want to, you know, enjoy it with the audience. I want to discover it with the audience. Uh, and he said, yeah, that's the same thing with me. Then we both agreed we were just lazy. You know, <laughs> that, was, uh, that was it. Hey, Steve, it's been a long time since I talked to you. I guess so, yeah. Yeah, what, about two hours now? <laughs> yeah. Oh, where'd you talk to him? On the phone. Well, on, on the, the phone. Yeah. Oh, okay, good. See, I, I know what you guys do, all you guys in California. You talk behind my back, Okay. So. I, I don't know that what we were talking about, you would have been too interested. Are you into rare and fine wines? Not really. Okay. Mm. There you go. <laughs> that was 90% of our conversation. Only if that wine is coming from a woman I'm with. Uh -huh. Craft wine. See, it's a, just a joke. It's a <laughs> sexual bon mot that I just gave out with. Anyway, listen, uh, I want to ask you, Speaking of of of, uh, of uh, Steve uh, Fox, okay. Um, speaking of Steve Fox, what did you think about the Fox decision? <laughs> the Fox decision. <laughs> you know the uh, the the thing Fox with the news. Dominion Fox suit. Ah. Yeah. Uh, do you think that? that is... Huh. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I was going to say, do you think they should have settled, like they did? Ah, oh, boy. Well, what else could they do? Well, I mean, no, they could have gone through the whole trial. Yeah, but would they want to? Well, I mean, I know from experience that what you'd like to do is not go to court. You'd like to settle out of court. But right. apparently the settlement wasn't enough. Um, how'd you feel about it, Charlie? I mean, I'm not, I'm not that happy with it only because there wasn't a provision for an apology. Mm -hmm. to be right. made publicly by each of the hosts and by Fox to what they had done to Dominion, which was not right. It was wrong. I wanted, I wanted to see Sean Hannity, Hannity and, and Tucker Carlson on the witness stand admitting that they lied. 
Well, that we would like to see too. But now you're the lawyer for these guys. You're the lawyer for Dominion. And you go, look, we know we're never going to get the one point, the one point six billion. That they got about half of it. Well, yeah, they got half of it. If we get half of it, we'll be lucky and won't cost us any more money to get it. And then if we went on with the case and let's say we won and let's say we even won the one point six billion. How much longer would this case be in court as they appeal it and they go to the Supreme Court and they do this and that and the other thing? So settling is a positive thing, but I think they should have settled with an apology. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me too. I'll agree. Yeah. yeah. The CEO of the uh, of the voting machine thing had some pretty negative stuff after the settlement to say about Fox News. Fox News had no comment. Well, the Fox News said that, uh, well, this is us saying that we're just trying to be the best journalists we can. Oh, what? Yeah. How did they determine that that was the way uh, this uh, thing came? Yeah, exactly. I think this is what you were trying to do, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which is sign language yeah. for uh, bring me the uh, check. I don't know. Yeah. Right. Anyway. Um, <laughs> I didn't want to say anything. You will get demonetized. Yeah, it, 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 forget it. You know they, you ready for? They demonetized my Monday show again. <laughs> Why? Well, you just talked about Fox. You'll probably get demonetized again. Yeah, but I want to know. I want to know. I want to know from these people at YouTube. Why did I get demonetized for the Monday show, where there's no four-letter words? We don't talk about politics. What did I do wrong? It's the Alex Bennett algorithm. Oh, I see. It's, it's... Yeah, <laughs> the name Alex Bennett, and no, the, I mean then I, I and then I say, okay, I want you, I want you to go back and check it uh, manually. Which why is... don't you why don't you take your name off one time and just call it the pop up one week and just see what happens? No, what I'll the, the, the that might have podcast. a point. That that may that may work. You know, it actually might work if you just left your name off and let it run as the the pop up. Oh, okay. It, it That's might what be. I'm saying. The I think Bennett Kevin, podcast. I think Thank Kevin's you. got a point. The Alex Bennett algorithm. You know, so I don't Alex understand. It makes no sense to me. It makes no sense. And then the other time they got they they demonetized me last week was uh, one of the things Marjorie and I did in the park. Oh um, no. Really? Kissing. Yeah. There's nothing we no, do that, in the park except kiss each other. Although I think tongue two, kissing. Two people. That's, that's it's the tongue. tongue. Is it the that's tongue? Pornography. Is it the tongue that's causing the problem? Yes. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a senior pornography. No, I. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> oh, that's good. Senior swap, spit swapping. Well, who's the uh, Who's the one in um, Atlanta? The uh, woman there oh, that uh, Mandy, Mandy, Mandy. Yes, oh, yeah. yes. I have a it, feeling that's why. See, something must have been said, and it no. to her as a joke, or I no, don't know. no, no. All she huh. wants to do is punch Phil out. What's wrong yeah. with that? <laughs> what? <laughs> she didn't even say that last Monday. <laughs> I don't know. One Monday she said that I was watching. She said she wanted to punch Phil. Yeah, that was a couple. Well, of we all we all say that. So what's, I don't what's know that she, she, I don't know that she's that aware of who Phil is because she doesn't really listen to this show. She she mentioned that one or two times. Yeah, she did. Well, did she, she knows who knows who's a whack job. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's a whack job. <laughs> well, who doesn't want to punch Phil? That doesn't get shouldn't get you demonetized. Exactly. You know, but um, did you uh, did you watch sixty minutes this uh, last week? I, I gotta watch it. Remind well, me what was start. on it. Oh, uh, they went into the full AI thing and how that whole AI thing oh, is yeah. going crazy and deep into Bard, B A R D. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The new Bard system that their Google is pushing out slowly, mm. and how it it actually uh, how the computers can actually have feeling. Feeling. Yeah, they act they're, like they have feeling. Yeah, they they're starting to you know, put out, I, I didn't catch the whole thing, but I caught, you know, maybe five or 10 minutes into it. And then that, you know, it's, it's, it has a lot to do with, you know, the thing that you were doing where you, you know, it, you tell it to do something and it, and it does it and it does it better, you know, like telling it to do a commercial for you. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, it was, it was saying you give it keywords and it would come back with a, a poem or something or some kind of a, um, uh, what was it, Charlie, a, a a paragraph with feeling 
a yeah. poem with feeling, actual feeling to it. But did you so, see South Park? South Park nailed it too. Well, no, I didn't. <laughs> South Park, yeah, they, South Park was really good. They did a chat thing on there. But it was basically, you know, how 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 crazy the algorithms have gotten and mm -hmm. where they're going, mm -hmm. and you know, it it just goes to show that um, they have to be real careful about what they're doing because it's getting really 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 good and they're saying that it's going to take jobs and it's going to change jobs it already has so it'll take jobs but it'll also take jobs and change their job people's jobs into a different job yeah it's already happening with radio well yeah exactly it, it, they're already it, doing it with it, radio. is there anything of that sort happening where you are i mean kqed is probably a little more oh, shall no. we say it, it won't happen to kqed yeah. But it is happening with uh, one company that I used to work for, and they're voice tracking all the stations. Well, they're they, taking... they, that, but that's been going on for years. But no, but they're actually taking the uh, voice of somebody, like let's say it's you. Okay. And AI is mimicking you doing breaks. And they were talking about that. They were talking about yeah. putting the voices and the faces and voices to the faces. Well, mm -hmm. can you say something that you never said? Yeah. Considering radio they is said on the it. election is going to be brutal with stuff like that this coming election. Yeah. Well, considering that, um, uh, <clears throat> considering that, uh, you know that. Uh, now I forgot what I was going to say. Yeah, you'll remember. Talking yeah. about AI. AI. We're, we're you. talking about AI, but I mean, I was talking about the fact that AI. Oh yeah, what I was going to say is, is that they. Uh, I think yes, it can replace a lot of people in broadcasting. It probably could. You could probably do away with the disc jockey and just have somebody, uh, some voice, come on AI, uh, t you know, reading a script or whatever, or even making up its own thing. I mean, I, mean, I see that as entirely possible. But radio's on its last leg, mm -hmm. and that's wow. the another part of this. Okay, so that being the case. Um, maybe maybe AI isn't what killed radio. It's probably radio that killed radio. There's radio this guy radio. here in New York who owns a radio station. His name is Casamudis or Casamodis. He he owns he owns supermarkets and decided to buy the KBC here in New York. And it turns out now that there's a new thing that they're working about, uh, they're talking about, and that is the car dealers, the car manufacturers are saying they're no longer going to be putting AM radios in cars. They're only going to put FM in cars, which is still radio, but it's only going to be FM, and he's only an AM station. He doesn't have an FM signal. And so yeah. he, he, he's gotten, he's gotten, a, he's turned out a commercial with a celebrity um, to do a commercial about, hey, let's keep, a, you know, uh, radio going let's keep am radio going don't let the car companies blah 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 and guess who he got to do it mike pence <laughs> and i'm thinking to myself good going that's going to sell everybody yeah right you know oh and you just gave me a good reason not to want to listen to am radio okay. now didn't he buy that station for one hundred fifty thousand dollars? I don't know oh. if he bought it for 150000 but it was going pretty cheap because Cumulus wanted to get rid of it. Hmm. Wow. You know. Uh, so he bought it, and, you know, I mean, he, I guess he's doing okay with it. I, you know. God, if, it was, if it was that cheap, I would have bought it and let Alex Bennett run 24 hours a well, day. Well, the last thing I would buy if I was going to buy a radio station <laughs> is an AM radio station. All right, right. But the Sorry. last thing I'd do is buy a radio station. Yeah. You know, now what has been radio been uh, replaced by? Hey, the podcast. podcast. Yeah. Boy, isn't it amazing how things get worse and worse yeah. and worse <laughs> and worse? I mean, now any amateur can do radio. Now, I don't mind the democracy of that, that any of you guys, if you wanted to, could start a podcast. And maybe if you're really good at it, a lot of people would listen to it. I like that democracy. But the thing is, that there's too much of it. Mm -hmm. You know, how many podcasts are there out there? 300,000? Some amazing amount. And you go... Oh, it's crazy. And I'm fighting for, you know, 
a handful of listeners here. And, and you know, I could up this the ratings on GabNet if I just do a murder mystery story. Ooh, you know, uh, which I'm, I refuse to do, of course. And then again, I don't know of any murder mysteries that I want to. I mean, I see it happening in TV, too. I mean, if you ever see some of these shots, like, I've seen it on uh, CNN or even the Today Show or whatever. When they when they pan back, and you used to see five six cameramen, now you see maybe two, mm-hmm. and the other shots are probably, you know, remote cameras setting up in the rafters that they just take a but shot you're, of. You're lucky that you see anybody behind the cameras. And not only that, that you see anybody behind the cameras because they're probably robots now. Well, there, most TV stations, local TV stations, employ robot cameras, okay? Right, right. However, I was talking to somebody. Who was I talking to? It was an interview I was doing today with Steve Kravitz uh, uh, about uh, the fact that when I, uh, here in New York, one of the only outfits that ever had me on on a, any kind of a regular basis what, were two people. One was MSNBC in the early days, and I was on every week with Tucker Carlson. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, I know. Uh, but it was Tucker Carlson. He was very nice to me. I can't complain. Okay. And the other was, because they were right across the street, Fox. And every time I did Fox, treated great, you know, respected, not. And when I went there and did them, I went, this is amazing. Because over at MSNBC, I was just sitting in a room with a, with a robot camera in front of me, talking to the robot camera. Over at Fox, three cameras, and there's a human being behind every camera, and I and I mentioned it to this per, uh, to Kravitz, and I said, "Come to think of it, the other day I was watching that show Outnumbered, you know, yeah. and they sometimes take a shot of the whole room yeah. with the cameras, and there is yeah. a camera person behind every camera. Yeah. So of all the people in the business." To try not get get cheap with that, I think if you go over to MSNBC, those are all robot cameras. I'm sure, yep. you know. That's what I was trying to compare because I've seen that. Yeah, so I mean, uh, I got to hand I got to hand it to Fox. At least they, you know, I mean, even if it's, if it's a union thing, all the other places have been able to force the unions out, or you know, or, or in negotiations say, well, we want to have robot cameras now, you know. But anyway. Hmm. They, I'm, I'm saying something nice about Fox. They just treated me fine. You know, I can't complain about the way they treated me. Uh, it's how they treat the rest of the country. Well, mm-hmm. no, it, no, it's no, it's it's their ethics. You know, they they have no ethics. Lights, they, camera, bullshit. Well, I explained. You know why? You know why do we have ratings? Do you know why we have ratings? I know. I know. Uh, probably, Mr. Fox knows it. <laughs> but then again, money. he's a KQED. They don't give money. a damn about ratings, or do they? <laughs> money, because uh, yeah, money. Yeah. yeah, money to bring in new sponsors. But yeah, Fox no, you know, here, no, here, here, here's the bottom line. You okay. want to know how many people are watching you, because that's what you base your advertising rates on. It's called right. cost okay. per thousand. So you can have you can have uh, only five people listening to you. But if your rates are cheap enough for five people on a cost per thousand basis, you can sell advertising. But it's that if you're going to sell advertising and you're not getting good ratings, you're going to have to sell it for less. So this is why they were so panicked over at, uh, over at um, um, Fox because they saw a diminishing of their audience when they made the call on Arizona for Biden. Uh, they lost a lot of people. And what does that mean? That means less of this coming in. So mm-hmm. how are we going to make more of that start coming in? Hey, why don't we go after Dominion? You know? And that's what Dominion was counting on in their argument. Is that they did it because it made them money. Not because they believed it to be true. They knew it not to be true. And yet they, you know, persisted. So that's what goes with that historically though has fox been this bad i don't think so i mean back in the day when you were on it was it that bad they were they were known as pretty right wing i mean i remember once i I, I told i told you'll hear this on the interview with kravitz i think tomorrow night i said kravitz uh, i i distinctly remember being in the makeup room 
and they had the most modern makeup room you ever saw. They had, they spray paint the makeup on you. Yeah. Right. Okay. And uh, good good makeup woman said made me look terrific. She said, "Yeah." She says, uh, uh, "So uh, what do you do?" I said, "Well, I I'm, I have a radio show over at Sirius across the street." Sirius XM. So what kind? I said, oh, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of politics. Said, oh, uh, where are you politically? I said, oh, I'm way to the left. She looked at me and she said, you're in a lot of trouble here. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. Got him out of the picture. <laughs> but I went in and did this show, and and it was they were very nice to me. And and by the way, it was a panel, and we did have like a libertarian, and we had a me. And then we had, I think there was another another liberal on there, and then there were a couple of right wingers. It was a very balanced uh, group. Now I don't know if that's true today. You know, the only time I ever watch them is to go over and look at outnumbered, so I can see if I can look up their dresses while I'm watching them. You know, but uh, um, it was it was uh, it was something. But anyway, so you know, I mean, it's it was all for money. And and when your politics are all for money, then who needs it, needs it? You know. Um, uh, you you got to, at some point at which you say, okay, if we're going to do news, then we have to be we we can't take sides. We have to just do the best job we can at supplying people with every bit of information they need to know in order to make an intelligent decision on their own. And they didn't do that. And they, on top of that, they, you know, they, they even made it worse by saying we're fair and balanced. Okay, that was the first big lie. But you go over to MSNBC and it's no different. I mean, those people over there are all thinking about how are we going to play to our audience? Oh, sure. And how are we going to maximize our audience? And why are we doing that? For advertising. Mm -hmm. Yep. You know? Now, now Steve works in a you work work in a non-commercial environment over there right. at KQED, but, but we do have, if you want to say, sponsors. So, well, you have donors. Well, yeah. It, yeah, it's uh, it, but it's just a quick little mention. This hour is brought to you by or is, you yeah, know, it actually goes for about uh, I think it's fifteen seconds each. Yeah. that they get. Yeah, yeah, but, I mean, but they go the detail. Do you take commercial breaks that way? Yeah, we just start off by saying, you know, support comes from, you know, whoever it may be, you know, Comcast business, uh, Comcast advertises, blah, 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 you know, and yeah, it's basically a commercial. But I know a while, a long time ago, it wasn't even that way. It was just a mention of who it is, and then they move the, on. This program is being brought to you by and viewers like you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. And, That's it. and now it is, you know, you know what they've done? Yeah. PBS has done. They didn't run. They don't. Still don't run commercials much on their TV stations. On the TV stations, that are running stuff. Mm -hmm. But if you go over to their PBS um, a website, their 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 mm -hmm. app, okay, uh, you better bet your life there are commercials there. Oh man, you know, they're a whole they're minute. They're on the air. Yeah, you know, they'll run a minute commercial before the show. You know. But they don't. They didn't say they were non-commercial. You know, so no, they're on an app, so they're not broadcasting. I guess they get away with that. They can get away with it exactly. Uh, people would get very mad if they ran real heavy, long commercials on, you know, on say oh KQED. Gosh. Well, TV. you will, yeah. <laughs> have a listen one morning or afternoon, uh, like through All Things Considered or one of the other shows that are on there. Mm -hmm. You'll find me talking for about, oh God, about a minute and a half, you know, going on with all these sponsors and all these things that the station's doing and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. It's huge. So, and they're getting the, uh, the advertisers and then the advertisers, well, I shouldn't say advertisers, donors. And then the donors are actually getting results. So it's, it's working out really well. Oh, yeah, well, of course. But, I mean, do they care at KQED Radio, which you are with, do they care that, uh, that, that uh, you know, that they, they, what the ratings are? I mean, do they say, Yeah, they do. They do. And mm -hmm. do they tell you, hey, let's do more to get the ratings up there and so on? Or 
Well, they have, you know, they talk about KCBS, you know, because it's going head and head with them, you know, and we're always beating them. But um, every once in a while, they will come in and beat us. And it's due to a ball game or something. I don't know what See, what most else. people don't know what we're talking about in the rest of the country. But I got to tell you, folks, this is the most unusual story ever. For years, KGO was the number one station in San Francisco, 35 years running. And then all of a sudden, one day, they went from what was called the diary method to the, uh, what the, uh, the it it's like a- PPM it, or it, whatever it, it is. It, well, what you do is you carry around a little uh, a beeper-like object, and yeah. it, and the TV stations, radio stations, so on, put out with a signal to say what the station is. So it does the monitoring, and you don't put it down in a diary. And that changed everything. Okay. I thought the FCC required them to send out that signal. No. No. Oh. No. If they don't send it out, they don't get rated. Oh, wow. Okay. So what happened is is that it it uh, it became the order of the day. And all of a sudden, KGO, the station, which for 35 years was number one in the Bay Area, was suddenly number 30 or something <laughs> like that. And, you're, and guess what became number one? The non-commercial station, KQED radio mm -hmm. oh. who would have thought because you know they didn't even rate kqed in the past because they would only rate commercial stations right but then they were somehow i don't know forced or told that they had to include non-commercial stations in in what they were rating and you guys became number one there, the only problem there is you really couldn't sell a whole bunch of commercials. You could only send, <laughs> sell like one an hour or something like that. But that must have driven the rest of the industry in San Francisco crazy. Oh, it yeah, it did. And someone's coming through my gate. Really? Yeah. Be sure um, to get your gun, go shoot them. Okay. Yeah. Bill? No, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, do we need to bring this up? What? Oh, those, those. The last, the last, the last three days. Three oh. shootings of people <laughs> being shot going up to somebody's door, or not? No, wrong no. door. Wrong yeah. door. Or a car door. Car door. Or when driveway. There... Or this, this kid, and it's miraculous because this yeah. one kid went to this guy's door, and it was the wrong oh, place. Look, looking for his, uh, his sister, sibling, sibling, yeah. and uh, it was the wrong door. And the guy said, go away. And as the kid was getting ready to leave, he gets shot through the head, or shot in the head. Shot twice. And then where else? I think in his leg was the other place. Oh, A shoulder, whatever. And uh, miraculously, that kid was out of the hospital in two days, I think. Yeah, the bullet didn't penetrate the brain. Yeah, so I mean, very lucky, very lucky. But they arrested this guy. He's 84 years old. Ooh. These 80 year olds. What are we gonna do with them? Yeah. What are you gonna do with them? They give him. A, they give him. A, give him give life. Him a gun. Give him a life, <laughs> and that means a year. Gun and you know. And salt. Yeah. I'll yeah. come back and, and then, then the next thing was this woman who was going to see some friends or whatever, and then she realized she was going up the wrong driveway, mm -hmm. and she starts turning around to leave. I think this was. Was this here in New York? I think. Turn, I think it was up in the Buffalo area. Wasn't yeah, it? It turns around to yeah. leave, and a guy from a house way up on the hill opens fire. Opens fire and kills her. She had friends in the car with her. Yeah, yeah. And then the other one was this cheerleader. Two cheerleaders going to the wrong Austin. car. Going that to the wrong car. car. They thought it was their car, and then it wasn't. And then uh, a, a gun shoots out the window or whatever, and and. Uh, the girl didn't get killed, but she's in the hospital, you know. So that happens all the time. So many stupid white Teslas here. Yeah. Go down from coming from Costco and I went down the wrong aisle, went to the wrong car one time. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I didn't get shot. Yeah, Another reason every everybody should have a gun. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. exactly. Perfect. So to shoot well, back. But <laughs> you know, my question is this. When in the world are we going to wake up and say enough is enough with guns in this country? When are we going to say, it, do you know that we have 25, uh, what, what, what did they say, 25 times the amount of, of uh, 
of uh, homicides with guns over the next yep. country of our kind, uh, I don't know what you would call us, uh, 25, 25 times the homicides. Don't Not you just think homicides, it, murders. Yeah, you have more more deaths with gun, from guns than countries that are in active warfare have. Yeah. Well, I don't know about that, but uh, I think it's that's probably true. true. Look, Google it. You know, I mean, the amount of uh, I think it's time that we started saying enough is enough with the guns. Okay. You know, yeah. um, uh, obviously, it's like as I said before, it's like if, if you have a kid and he. Um, uh, doesn't play with his toys right, you take his toys away. You don't let him play with them for a while. You know, the fact is Americans have not, do not use their guns properly. And it needs to be done away with. You know, the NRA they, just held their convention so this some, last some weekend. Some states have red flag laws, like California, New York, and stuff that, like that, that not southern states. That, 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 and what so, they do is if somebody's stupid or crazy with a gun, you turn them in, mm -hmm. and they take their guns but from what them. If, what if the first around. time they get stupid or crazy with a gun, it's like this 84-year-old guy who then shoots a kid in the head? I don't just Okay, so, church. I mean, red flag laws are are really weak. It's only meant to kind of make the populace feel better that we're doing That's something. That's my point. They but need to be. They need to be stronger laws. No, they don't. No laws at all. I say, hey, if you don't have a reason to have a gun, mm -hmm. uh, and if you're a policeman, you have a reason to have a gun. Okay. If you're a hunter, you go hunting. You should be forced to leave your rifles at the hunting lodge or at the cl hunting club. That's the what they. they uh, it's what they do in England too. You are not allowed to have a rifle unless you keep it at a club okay yeah. the, these things the, you know it's just let's get the guns out of the hands of people let's just not make them available to people and yeah, yeah. we'll still have problems with guns but it won't be like it is now i mean it, it it's dangerous out there guys you know well they said people in the house they're having lapel pins that are like ak's or something did you hear that no yeah. yeah, but you know they just had the. Uh, oh, here we have somebody behind you, but she's she's <laughs> blurry. Oh, there. she's coming in. Yeah, yeah, but she's. It's, it's like Brian. You know when Brian brings his daughter in and unblur you know, her. Well, unblur yeah. her. Uh, unblur oh, her. How do I? Uh, you're blurred. There you are. You're blurred. Is, uh, let me let me unblur. <laughs> <laughs> and and who is, who is this lovely person? This is Amy. Yeah. And uh, she came over wait, for. Wait, I'm oh, trying to get, get out of the blurred spot. Wait, Did hold on. Wait, I'm trying to get out of the. Wait. No, oh, all you do is you go. You, you, you go. Oh, it's it. where it says your background. There you no, go. I almost no. got it. Oh, choose background. Oh, go. Yeah, yeah. go. Just blurred go to none. Go to none. Wow. There you are. There. 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 <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, okay, Steve, you can leave. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he has permission now. Yeah, Thank yeah, you. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sorry. So, so that that's Amy. Hi, Alex. <laughs> okay, we don't want you to confuse that Amy with the other Amy on the next show. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> could be her. <laughs> no. All right. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Oh, you're going? Oh, I have to leave. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I right. don't blame you. Oh. <laughs> anyway, we, you and I will talk soon because I'm. I swear, I got to get you the stuff to record. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. That sounds good. And let's all I'll give him a big soon, round guys. of applause, folks, for being the new voice of Gabnet. Huh? Oh, don't forget to wear protection. <laughs> yeah. Oh gee. <laughs> oh, that's nice. That's really nice. That's real tasteful. classy. That's tasteful, Alvin. Alan. We can always. We can when we when we feel we're losing the, the tastefulness of our show, we can always rely on Alan to bring it back to reality. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. Well, part of our conversation earlier today. So. But anyway, so you know, I mean, uh, this thing with guns, it's just. It, it, uh, I, it, it's, I'll be watching MSNBC or something. They'll say, "Oh, there's just been a shooting," and blah blah blah. You know. Uh, it's for Sweet Sixteen party. Four people killed. It's not. It's, not, it's becoming so complex. Well, I, I say to Marjorie, um, you know, is this the murder of the day? Is is this the mass shooting of the day? Because literally over the last four or five days, we've had a mass shooting every day, or some kind of bizarre shooting, like, you know, people finding the wrong address or whatever. 
none of those people should be allowed to have guns. Right. You know, they did. The one who shot the girl and killed her from his house, uh, they just put him in jail without without bail. They and then said, he bailed. Oh, the one from the house. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They bailed the guy out who was 84. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's only being charged with, I think, second degree assault because the kid's on the mend now. You know, he's up and about and he's doing okay. Why not charge him with attempted murder, shooting through a door? Well, uh, there are, there are, there is a, a case here to be made for a uh, racial event. You know? Absolutely. So, whatever. Hi, Jeff. You haven't said anything tonight. Well, that's true. <laughs> but I, I did learn some new things today. Hmm? My, my youngest high school student yeah. today is graduating. Yeah. But, so she sends a picture of herself. Now remember, she's 19 years old. 18 yeah. Years old. Uh, right. She has a way easily to make her face look 40 years older. Yeah. Oh, really? Uh, has anybody heard of this? Person? Yeah. They're living through Photoshop. Yeah. I think, I think you can do that. Yeah. I think you can do that. I think you, yeah. with AI, There's you're going to be able to do it. on the phone that does yeah. it automatically. Yep. Really? Yeah. What's it called? Ray's really 17. He just looks 60. <laughs> what's it called? Yeah, I, I see the app. It's called the Look Like Marjorie app. Uh, Turn it on now and see what you look like. Oh. No, so what my son did, he, he called up his sister and says, I, she looks just like like you. <laughs> oh, God. Why? The world is so silly. Yeah. So anyway, so I, you know, I just, uh, the world is, uh, the world is uh, not pleasant these days at all. And now, what is it that I heard? Uh, um, um, isn't Trump supposed to go somewhere mm -hmm. to uh, back to court or something again yeah. to testify? He's he's like uh, he's going to be spending a lot of his life in court. And by the way, I mean it's not over for him. Uh, but I hope they somebody nails him before he runs for president. You know, thought he was. Hmm. I thought he was running already. Uh, yes, he's running, but, you know, do we have to seriously consider him yet? Well, DeSantis is getting in there with some jabs and stuff. Yeah, but DeSantis also is is losing money. He's not getting money from yeah. the Republican Party. He's I mean, another idiot. The Republicans are not backing him. Well, he no. he's a complete moron, too. Oh, Again, absolutely. you know, what I, I don't mind. Look, I wouldn't mind any of these people. If I had the feeling they were sincere in their beliefs, DeSantis isn't sincere in his beliefs. He's trying to say whatever he thinks will get him the vote of his constituency. And right now that constituency is Republicans because the Democrats don't matter. He's got to get nominated first. Because if you ever notice, when these guys play to their base, and then, like, uh, hello, everybody, you have reached Green Room on Air, and this is your host, Ray Ray Renate, formerly Ooh, called Ray Renati. And this is my little. Is there a reason why we should be hearing your show? Can I have your autograph, Ray? <laughs> I was editing it and I forgot to turn off you're the. You're editing uh, a show while you're on yeah. this one. That's, that's quite rude, Ray. <laughs> And now we can't now we even can't, hear you. Now right? we can't hear him apologize. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. Oh. Jeez Shit. almighty. Well, I couldn't Wait, stay well, away. Hold, hold on guys. a second. I didn't hear what you said. I'm editing tomorrow night's show. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Let me... Boy. Anyway. Well, that's why I get paid the big bucks. <laughs> yeah, Ray, Ray, huh? Hmm. Hmm. Anyway, it's, where were we? Oh, you're listening? What were what were we talking about? I'm, I'm having a hard time. Con it, you stop I'm me. so sorry. You stopped me from concentrating. I can't remember what I was talking about. We were talking about Trump maybe having more trouble. Oh, oh yeah, no. What I was saying is that when Trump was was running for the Republican nomination, he was playing to that base. When he suddenly was not was running for president, and he had to play to everybody. His whole to tune changed, yep. and then when he became president. 
forget that. I don't even want to remember that. It's a horror story. What? You know, I was going to ask the group this, if I could, with, since we're talking about Trump. Do you guys think, well, this has nothing to do with Trump. Do you think Biden should step away for next election and maybe have him go back to a primary for a new person? I do. I do. You know, I mean, I, and I'm i speaking as a guy who's getting older. I mean, you hear me tonight. I can't remember what I was talking about certain times, you know. I mean, but, but I'm thinking like, even like, like you were saying, Alex, they should have an, I don't want, I'm not trying to sound like an ageist, but I'm just saying indirectly, do we really need a guy in there at like 82 running the country? Well, at your age, you're an ageist for saying it. At my age, I agree with you, and I'm not an ageist for saying it. You know? Okay, yeah. But, but you, I mean, I, Tony, Tony, people voted for Biden because he could beat. He could no, but beat I'm talking Trump. about the next so, election. So that's the thing. If you're going to have somebody run that the, the people don't think that can beat Trump, they're not going to vote for him. See, if you nope. could get somebody really fresh to run who just is up there, doesn't have much of a track record, mm -hmm. but just has a lot of ideas, I think he could beat any Republican. Because the Republicans have a big uh, problem on their back, and that's the whole abortion issue. They're not very popular because of the abortion issue. I think that cost them in 2022. Yeah, yeah but it won't cost them if, you've got, if we've got a candidate that has just as many problems. Because what they're going to throw at, uh, at, at Biden is all the border stuff, you know, and uh, the, age. It, the age, of course, is going to be brought up. You know, gas prices are going up, and they're almost five dollars a gallon. I mean, California. I think you know, I think the, the the optimum president for me was Obama, because he was just the right age, you know, old enough to 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 have common sense and experience, and 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 uh, young enough to still seem alert and around and you know with it, and uh, that he could come up with. What what do you what are you saying, Jeff? You're giving me a. Mm. I, I think his experience uh, was not as much as we would like. Well, the first term, second term, he had learned the job. Obviously. Yeah. And he did a great job yeah. of that. Well, my my big. But he was a very intelligent, articulate guy right from the beginning. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, well, that's what yeah. I like most about him. His yeah. intelligence, his sense of humor, a lot of things like that. He's probably the funniest president we've had in years. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, uh, I, I, you know, I mean, it was quite a thing uh, when he ran because I remember most of all a picture in Newsweek magazine of him walking up the steps of the Senate because he had just been a senator for about a year, maybe mm -hmm. tops two when he, when he started running for president. And it the, the caption below the picture said, "How can he expect to solve, pro you know, be president and solve problems when he hasn't even been in the Senate much yet? You know that he really went into the presidency with little or no experience mm -hmm. for the job." Well, Clinton did the same thing. No, he was absolutely no, not. Was governor. He was governor of Arkansas. Governor of Boston, no, wait, no, no. Hold on a second. He was governor of Arkansas, not once, but then defeated and ran again and became governor again. Yeah. And if anybody is ready-made to be president of the United States, it's a governor. All he's doing is the president's job in microcosm. Yeah. So he was very prepared to be president. He was also very smart. Yeah, but he also yeah. was ready to be president. Okay. Uh, uh, and, and my big thing about... Uh, Obama, I mean, I voted for him, but my feeling was, you know, he really doesn't have the experience, and he didn't. So he got Biden to go be there with him because Biden did have the experience, and that was a good decision. It was the, the best decision he made, you know. Oh, hey, I just looked at the clock. Whoa, Whoa we're, yeah. wow. we're running out of time, folks. Oh, boy. And I start batting my chops, and guess what happens? I thought maybe your refrigerator told you it was time. <laughs> it, listen, I, no, it's my pacemaker. Uh, sorry, Jeff. Uh, Jeff, thank you for being here tonight. We appreciate it. Same thing with you, Brian, as always. Uh, and a big thank you to Mike Wallace. No, 
Right. <laughs> Charlie Wallace. Oh, oh my. Yeah. Thank you to Kevin. Thank you to Alan. Thank you, oh, Tony. And thank you, Ray. Are you finished editing yet? I am. I am. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> and thanks also to uh, Steve Fox for being here uh, earlier. Uh, we'll see you all again, hopefully, next time, tomorrow night, same time, same station, in life. Give yourself a big wave goodbye, and I'll wave goodbye at you, okay? There they go, folks. There's our uh, our, our people. Let me just hang up on them here. Uh, anyway, that's it. We'll be back again tomorrow night. Uh, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, stay tuned for the intersection next. Gabnet Live is the place to call on Skype. I'll see you tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her. Good night. I'm running out of time here. I got to speed up. Hey. <laughs>